Hello everyone. So in the previous lecture, we discussed about the liquid drop model, which explained the masses of the nuclei, the energetics of the beta decay and fission. But then we found that there are certain observations it could not explain and they are essentially the fluctuations in the gross properties of the nucleus. So uh, to, to explain those uh, other phenomena which could not be explained by liquid drop model, another model has been proposed and that is the nuclear shell model. So today we will discuss the nuclear shell model. Just to recapitulate what are the limitations that the liquid drop model had which it could not explain certain observations I have tried to list here. So the, uh, the most important aspect that the liquid drop model could not explain was the extra stability associated with the magic number of protons and neutrons. In fact, what we discussed in the previous one that if you draw, to draw the difference in the mass number the, and the, 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 the mass, liquid, liquid drop mass and the experimental masses, then we found that the experimental masses are lower than the liquid drop masses for certain number of neutrons and protons and this corresponds to let us say 2, 8, 20, 50, 82 and so on. So that means these nuclei have lower mass that means they have higher binding energy and therefore there is extra stability associated with this magic number. So this part could not be explained using the liquid drop. And associated with these magic numbers, there are other properties, other observations like the very high suppression energy. Suppression energy means the energy required to remove a neutron or a proton for nuclei having this number of protons and neutrons. Again, the magic numbers 50, 82, 126. So, this is 126. Similarly, now, if you have a, a nucleus having one neutron more or one proton more than the magic numbers, then that nucleus, that neutron or nucleon is very easy to remove. But that means the suppression energy is very low for these nuclei which have magic number plus one nucleon axis. Again, associated with the magic number things. And also, the, the nuclei having the magic number of neutrons and protons have, particularly magic number of neutrons, have very low neutron absorption cross sections. So that they, you know, they, they, the next level is very high. So they are unable to, the probability of capturing a neutron become very small. Then the, again, if the, in the case of alpha decay, which we will discuss later on in the probably subsequent lectures, if the radio the isotope has got 126 neutrons, that is again a magic number, then the alpha energy for such a nucleus is very low. Also, in fact, if the after the alpha decay, the nucleus is having the daughter product is having 126 neutrons, then the alpha energy is very high. So again, associated with the masses. Again, the magic number of nu uh, neutrons and protons, they have very large number of isotopes. Particularly, you know, if you have the 50, 50 proton, so tin, tin, tin has got a large number of stable isotopes. Again, st stability. Other than that, there are uh, example, uh, there are other observations like beta delayed neutron emission. Certain isotopes like fission, frag fission products, 137 iodine, 87 bromine, these isotopes emit delayed neutrons, means uh, they undergo beta minus decay and after beta minus decay, the total product is left with an excited state that is more than the binding energy of neutron. So instead of gamma emission, that total excited state emits a neutron. They are called delayed neutrons because they follow the half-life of these precursors. Also, the isomers, the nuclear isomers are those uh, nucle excited states of nuclei which have a long half-life and they decay by gamma ray. Sometimes they are ga they are decayed by gamma ray is hindered. They can also emit beta minus or beta plus. So the nuclear isomers also 
could not be explained by the liquid drop model and that is why there is urgent need to have another model that we call it the shell model. So this is the shell model which was proposed by Mayer and Jensen in 1949 and uh, the, the shell model has certain assumptions like you know uh, here now it is more like atomic structure no where the nucleon the electrons are revolving around the nucleus in a certain fixed orbits stationary orbits here the nucleons move now in, and like in the atom where we have a central potential offered by the nucleus the nucleus is positively charged and the electrons are negatively charged and electrons move around the nucleus because of the central potential attractive potential of the nucleus and so you have the assumptions about the stationary states of nuclear needs more. Here in the case of nucleus there is nothing like the central potentials because the nucleons themselves constitute of the potential. So what is assumed that every nucleon moves inside the nucleus under the attractive potential generated by the remaining nucleons. So uh, any, any nucleon you take, it is, have, it is in a potential well that is formed by the other nucleons. Now in the case of uh, protons and neutrons, now they, have, they, move in, they are in separate potential wells. So you start seeing two potential wells, one for neutron, one for protons. And like you know for the atomic structure, you have you solve the Schrodinger equation for an electron. You find out the energy levels of electron K, L, M, and shells. Similarly, in this case of the nucleus, you will have the which you solve the Schrodinger equation for the neutron and the proton in a particular potential well, you will get the energy states, and that energy states are analogous to that for the electrons. Now, as you know, this nucleic neutrons and protons are fermions, so they follow the Pauli exclusion principle. And so then you will find that in a particular state, you know, only two nucleons will be occupying if they have to be paired up. So no two uh, nucleons will have the same quantum numbers. So this has been followed. And in, in that way, when the neutrons and protons are evolving, orbiting in different orbitals, you know. So essentially you assume this nuclear force is a weak force in that sense. It is not the weak force uh, associated with the beta decay, but it is compared to the strong force that we envisaged in the liquid drop model, in the, liquid, the shell model, the, the neutrons and protons are the separate potential wells and they don't interact with the other nucleons in their potential. So in that, way, in that sense, it is a relatively weak force. Okay. So essentially, though the cell model constitutes the solving a Schrodinger equation for the nucleon in a particular potential well. So what are the different types of potential wells that you can envisage? The simplest potential well is the square well potential. You have the attractive potential well having the depth of minus V0. This minus V0, so the potential well of the nucleus you know, is of the order of 30, 40 MeV deep potential well. And so the, the nucleus, when we are solving the equation, solving the equation for a neutron or a proton, we assume, you see, that is, you can assume as a square well. So essentially you have Vr is equal to minus V0 up for r less than the nuclear radius and then for more than r it is zero. So it's, that is the typical uh, attractive square well potential. So you can in fact solve the Schrodinger equation assuming a square well potential or more realistically you can use as a harmonic oscillator. In the harmonic oscillator again you have the attractive the minus v0 the depth of the potential and now it is a parabolic expression with R. So you have the potential minus V0 plus half M omega square R square. That is the energy of the oscillator. And so the, 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 the frequency of this oscillator is nothing but K, the force constant upon the mass of the nucleon. So the essentially the cell model will, will uh, in the cell model, we solve the Schrodinger equation 
for this harmonic oscillator potential and then we get the energy eigenstates and the eigenvalue. Okay, so let us try to now generate the cell model scheme by solving the Schrodinger equation for a three dimensional harmonic oscillator. So, the potential for the harmonic oscillator can be given in terms of Br equal to minus B0 plus the half m omega square r square, where omega is the oscillatory frequency that is given by the force constant upon the mass of the nucleon. And assuming that this oscillator is isotropic, that means the oscillation frequency in x, y, and z direction is same wx equal to wy equal to w. So, the Schrodinger equation for this will be xi equal to e psi. We will not go into details of the solving Schrodinger equation. Our interest is to get the eigenvalues for this equation and the eigenvalue of this Hamiltonian will be given in terms of the oscillatory quantum number n plus 3 by 2 x cross omega. 3 by 2 is coming towards the three dimensional harmonic oscillator and this is the unit of the oscillator energy. So, the frequency of oscillation can be given by 2 V0 upon mR square where R is the radius of the nucleus and n is the oscillator quantum number and so the energy, the oscillator number can start from 0 to higher values 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and so as the n value increases the energy of the cell increases. Now, let us try to set up the the yeah, eigenstates, uh, the different cell model states. For that, the like I told that the electrons are occupying the K, L, M cells in the atoms. Similarly, the nucleons, neutrons and protons are separately occupying the orbitals like uh, different orbitals like L, S, P, D, F and so on. And so, there is a formula for the oscillatory quantum number in terms of the different other quantum numbers. They are the n, small n, principal quantum number and small l is the orbital quantum number. The principal quantum number n can take values 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on, whereas the orbital quantum number can take the value 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and so corresponding to the value of l we have s, p, d, f, g and so on. So, the different combinations of small n and uh, small l can give you the same value of oscillatory quantum number. And so, you will find for the same oscillatory quantum number, there will be multiple orbitals uh, cont contributed to that particular oscillator quantum number that we can see in the next one. So, if you see the, let us try to now generate these cell model states uh, for a harmonic oscillator, we will try to fill the values of small n and small l which will satisfy this condition starting from n equal to 0. So, for 0 uh, ground state of the oscillator, we have, you can have, you can see here, n small n equal to 0 and small l equal to 0. You can see here, n minus, n, min, n, n equal to 1, 1 minus 1, 0 into 2, 0 and plus l equal to 0 also. S way, so l equal to 0 means s orbital. And the S orbital can occupy two nucleons. So the occupancy of the occupancy of this S orbital is two and the cumulative is also two. For the next oscillator quantum number one, again we can have how can you get n equal to one? So you start from n small n equal to one, one minus one equal to zero. So this term is zero, so we have L equal to one, that is the P orbital. So, in capital N equal to 1, we will have again one orbital P and the occupancy of P is P6, 6, 6, 6 nucleons and the total occupancy becomes 8. Now, let us go to the next the higher oscillatory quantum number N equal to 2. Here, we can have now two possible uh, combinations of small n and small l. So you can see here, when you take L equal, when you take N equal to 1, then 1 minus 1 is 0 and so you will have when we have n equal to 1 so you can see here okay so here we are going to n equal to 2 so you will have n equal to 1 and 1 minus 1 0 so into 2 0 so l equal to 2 l equal to 2 is the d state and it can occupy 10 nucleons and in combination of that so n equal to now you can have n equal to 2 so 2 minus 1 1 into 2, 2 plus 0. So, you can have a 2s state. So, basically you will have 
2s, 1d, 1p, 1s. So, you will have a 2s orbital close to the 1d orbital which can take 2 nucleons and the total occupancy becomes, a, you can see here 6 plus 2 plus 10 plus 2 you will have 20 nucleons. Let us come to the higher oscillator compound number. So, you can again you can have small n equal to 1, 1 minus 1. So, a small n will take 1, 2, 3, 4 values. So, 1 equal to n equal to 1, 1 minus 1, 0. The system is 0, L equal to 3. So, you will have 3f orbital, 1f, 1f orbital and f orbital can take 14 nucleons and in combination with that you can have now n equal to 2. So, you will have and 2 minus 1 is 1 and 1 into 2, 2, 2 plus 1 is 3. So, you have 2p orbital and so these two actually they are corresponding to same capital N. So, their indices are very close. And then P can take 6 nucleons. So, total is 14. Let us come to the N capital N equal to 4. And here you can have now 3 combinations N equal to small n equal to 1. So, L equal to 4. We have 1g N equal to 2. And this L equal to 2, you have 2d. And N equal to 3, so you will have 3s. And so the occupancy of G orbital 18, D orbital 10, and you have 70. So you can see here that by filling the orbitals using this formula and their occupancy, you can see that we are not able to reproduce the magic numbers of 2, 8, up to 20, you can, you can reproduce. But beyond that, the important magic number 50, 82, 126, we are not able to reproduce. So that means there is something missing in the cell model which we still we have not taken into account. And so that is where the spin orbit coupling becomes important. You know in the atoms, in chemistry we have uh, heard about the LS coupling. That means the small l orbital angular moment of all electrons combined to give the capital L that is the total angular orbital angular momentum and the spins of all electrons combined to form the capital S that is the spin angular momentum and the capital S and capital L combined that is called the LS coupling or Russell Saunders coupling and that nicely explains the spins of the atoms. In the case of nuclei, because the spin orbit coupling is very 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 strong, the L and S of the individual nucleons combine to form what is called the J and so this is called the JJ coupling. That means the J, the J angular momenta of each nucleon, they combine to form the total spin of the nucleus. So it is not the individual L and individual S. L and S coupled together to form a J. And so if you in the potential for this harmonic oscillator, you take a LS angular momentum spin orbit coupling term that is minus U R L dot S. Then you can let us see how the level scheme will change. So you can see the the, the vector product of vectors, the vector uh, sum of the L and S will be J and so you can write J square equal to L square plus S square plus 2 L dot S and so L dot S we want to get the magnitude of L dot S J square minus L square minus S square by 2 and you can now write the magnitude of J J, J square, L square, and S square so J, J plus 1, L, L plus 1 and S, S plus 1 that is half into 3 by 2. And so let us just see what happens to the spin orbit coupling, what does it do to the particular state. So we have now instead of L, S states we have a J state and so for J, J can be now L plus half or J can be L minus half, right. So you have a the spin, this L, it can be L plus half or it can be L minus half and so you will have different energy state. So each L state splits into two states L plus half L minus half. So when J equal to L plus half then L dot S you can calculate from here substitute J equal to L plus half you get L plus half L by 2 and so this L plus half state is a, that means if you put L by 2 here then this is a negative, uh, negative term minus u l dot s. So, this is the lower energy state and for j equal to l minus half l dot s you put in this formula you get minus l plus half by 2. So, essentially meaning that l minus half state is raised because if you add 
to put it here the minus one will become plus and so l plus half l minus half state is lowered so the net result of spin orbit coupling is a particular l state you have splitting of the l state l plus half being lowered and l minus half being raised the splitting between these two states is you can calculate from here l plus half by 2 minus of minus half l minus l by 2 so that is l plus 1 by 2 so this is the gap between the two states as so you can see here that as you go to higher and higher angular momentum values uh, orbital angular momentum values the gap between the l plus half and l minus half is increasing and this is what actually explains later on you can see that the the higher cell higher magic numbers or the this the spin orbit because of spin orbit coupling the higher cells are much more split and that leads to rebunching of the orbitals in different cells so that we will see in the next slide so higher the l value have the splitting and that repercussion of that we will see in this particular and then now we will fill the cell model states in the lieu of spin orbit coupling so let us see how do we start filling the spin orbit coupled states first thing is that we follow the Pauli exclusion principle that means the, the nucleons so no no nucleons will have the same quantum numbers that is the Pauli exclusion principle but the the main point is that when the filling of the electrons in the atoms and filling of nucleons and nucleus is quite different in the case of atoms the maximum multiplicity is prevails the the state having maximum unpaired electrons having lower energy but in the case of nucleus the moment we have two unpaired nucleons they get paired up because the pairing energy is very high okay so the l orbital as you can you have seen previously can accommodate two into l2 l plus one nucleons like s2 p6 d10 f14 and so on accordingly the occupancy of a j state because l has been l plus half and l minus half so each l has split into two and the total occupancy is equal to 2 l plus 1 into 2 so the j states will have occupancy 2 j plus 1 so 2 j plus 1 every j state you will see 2 j plus 1 occupancy then the pairing energy of nucleons is much more than the pairing energy of electrons the electron pairing energy of the order of few electron volt whereas in the case of nucleons we have seen the delta value for pairing energy is 1 to 2 mev so it is a very high pairing energy and the two nucleons of same type having same j are always paired up because of this high pairing energy which is unlike the electrons in the atoms so we will consider these facts while filling the uh, orbitals by nucleons in the next slide now you can see here so we have a j state which is ar arising from l plus half or l minus half and the occupancy of this is 2j plus 1 so this spin states whatever i am showing they are the j states of that particular orbit so up to this we have already seen so the s orbital is not split because l equal to 0 and so it occupies the two nucleons the p orbital is split into 1p 3 by 2 and 1p half and occupancy again 2j plus 1 so 3 by 2 is 4 1 by 2 is 2 the d orbital will split into 1d 5 by 2 1d 3 by 2 that as s orbital is not splitting and 5 by 2 will have 6 3 by 2 will have 4 1 by 2 will have 2 f orbital again will split into 2 1 s half and 1 f 5 by 2 and p orbital 2 p half and 2 p 3 by 2 so this is 1 1 1 2 1 2 1 2 3 so on okay so these are the the value of small n so now you can see here j the g orbital will split into g 9 by 2 and g 7 by 2 d orbital will split into d 5 by 2 and 3 by 2 and s will not split and so on h 11 by 2 h 9 by 2 now you can see the occupancy so what happens sir whenever the f 7 by 2 is lowered this uh, this s so up to 20 we have explained in the previous scheme 
but now in fact this s will give you 28 and 28 also this, there is a gap here so this is called a semi magic number I mean 28 neutron 28 protons also have extra stability and the, but it is not a complete magic number but 28 you know the nickel 28 proton around 28 proton uh, there is a extra stability in the nucleus so this is a called a semi magic number but the major magic numbers at 50 again because of the lowering of g9 by 2 level so this g9 by 2 is a part of the lower level lower shell and so this bunching of these levels leads to what you call it the shell so g9 by 2 lowered gives you 50 uh, magic number 50 so that gives the stability similarly h11 by 2 when it is lowered compared to h9 by 2 it explains the magic number h2 so this bunching of this h11 by 2 in the lower shell explains the magic number. so that is how similarly you will find i13 by 2 will give you 126 so the major uh, factor responsible for reproducing the magic number is the spin orbit coupling when the splitting of the j state l state into j l plus half and l minus half with the l plus half being lowered significantly for high l value that it is overlapping it is in close to the lower shell and so the magic numbers can be reproduced so this is now the it, up to scale so you can see here the cell model states without spin orbit coupling 1s 1p 1d 2s 1f 2p 1g and so on and then the, you can now apply spin orbit coupling here so as half 1p3 by 2 1p3 by uh, half now as you go to so here till till 20 there was no problem you have now f7 by 2 being lowered in fact there is something called a semi magic number of 28 so there is extra slight higher stability for 28 protons or neutrons and now you see here because of the lowering of 1g9 by 2 this there are no additional 10 nucleons here so there is a 50 nucleon shell magic number and again lowering of the h11 by 2 you get 82 lowering of the i13 by 2 you get 126 and so on so you can see and the gap this because of the gap between the l plus half and l minus half states for higher l values the the differences are rising and because of that we are able to explain the magic numbers of the nuclei so the the orbitals that are responsible for this magic numbers are the l plus half state of d f g h and i so this is how you can see that l plus half state gets lowered and then it bunches with the previous shell and so you get the magic number of so this is what uh, the cell model explains and the other aspects how how we can apply the cell model in predicting the different properties that we could not you know use for the in the liquid drop model i will discuss in the next like, next part of the my lecture so i will stop here and take up the applications of cell model in the thank you